Hello guys, welcome to Leaves and Lungs. So today we are going to continue the lecture on uh, soil sciences. So earlier we did a series on soil sciences. Uh, that is S.1.1 that deals with uh, what is the definition of the soil and how the uh, soil is being formed and what are the types of weathering and how the weathering impacts the uh, formation of soil. So everything we dealt in the first part. And now this video is about the different various processes uh, that actually result in the formation of various kinds of soil. Okay, so guys, let's start it. Let's go on to the topic proper straight away. So soil is one of the most important natural resources occurring in our uh, earth. So like all the all the plants and animals uh, depends upon soil for their life, livelihood and many occupations and many uh, humans also depends upon their soil for their life also. So like there are various fundamental processes that results in the formation of the soil. So we'll see one by one. So first process is humification. So humification is nothing but the process where humus is being formed. So in simple term, it is nothing but it is a transformation of raw organic matter into humus. So the organic matter includes all the plants and animals that is being have that have the tendency to decompose. So this can be either the leftover vegetables or the the wastages in your garden or litter or even uh, dead uh, kittens, dead cat or even any dead insects. So everything will be uncovered under organic matter. So these organic matter will decompose and finally it will be converted into humus. So this is an extremely complex structure and the process is also very much complex. So it, it involves because various organisms that is microorganism, various uh, endothermic, exothermic reactions and many micro processes will be taking place to the formation of humus. So like uh, we'll see like uh, uh, generally like the first thing like a uh, simple compounds like sugars and starches are attacked followed by proteins and cellulose. So like sugar, starch, proteins and cellulose these are the components of plant cell wall and also plant structures are made up by made by these element. Okay. And finally very resistant compounds such as tannins or decomposed and dark color substances known as humus is formed. So tannin is one of the pigment or tannin is one of the structure which is present in the barks of the plant and all. So these are like finally decomposed and uh, this, that ultimately results in the formation of humus. So this is how humification actually takes place. So you need to know this process because sometime it is asked in the exams also. So the next process is alluviation. So elevation is nothing but it is the mobilization and the translocation of certain constituents such as ferrous oxide, aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide, humus, calcium carbonate and other soil from one point of the soil body to another. Okay. So elevation is like escaping from one part to another. Okay. So the compounds which get escaped are these are the compounds. So just remember these compounds. So this might be asked in your prelims also like what is elevation associated with and which of the elements can undergo elevation. So, so you just remember these things alone. So in simple terms, it is means like washing out. So it is the process of removal of constituents in suspensions or solution by percolating water from the upper to lower layers. So that is imagine this is the arisons of soil. There are various different layers. So if all these compounds that is humus, calcium, carbonate and ferrous, so all these components will percolate or transfer from one part of the soil to another. This process is called as alluviation. Okay. So like uh, this encompasses mobilization and translocation of mobile constituents resulting in textual difference. Okay. So I'll show the images so that you can understand better. So here you can see like all the substances that is water percolates down through the soil column transporting organic material the organ and soluble inorganic matter. So like in the previous slide I said you all the carbonates and all the ferrous oxide sulfur dioxide will be like transported here that is from up above up from above to below. Okay. So see. So this is like uh, they are trans they are translocating from one layer to another layer. So this results in the formation of various colored layers or various soil layers. So this is one layer and this is another layer and finally this is one more layer. Okay. So the next process is alluviation. So alluviation is a continuation of alluviation. So uh, uh, in alluviation you see that all the substances will be transported from the upper layer to lower layer. So in elevation, all the transported layers will be get deposited into the lower layer and get fixed here. So this is called as elevation. Okay. So it is nothing but it is a deposition of soil materials in the lower layer and, uh, and th that leads to the formation of a separate horizon. So this horizon is called as alluvial horizon. Okay. 
and also like there are various specific soil forming processes so the most common is calcification so calcification is nothing but it is the formation and precipitation of accumulation of calcium carbonate so you know that very well in many in many parts of the uh, uh, earth calcification usually occurs so this will result in the formation of what rock limestone rock is also formed by this method okay and the next process is like decalcification. So the reversal of calcification is called as decalcification, where calcium carbonate is being removed or calcium ion from the soil is being leached by high temperature. So this is two. This is these are the like two uh, specific soil forming processes. And also there are like various methods where soil is being formed. We'll see one by one again. So the next topic is podsalivation. So it just you need to know about so podsalivation. It can be otherwise termed as acidification okay so acidification so it is nothing but it is a process of soil formation resulting in the formation of pozzols and pozzolic soils so nothing but it, these are like acidic compounds so pozzolic soils are like acidic soil okay so just remember these might be asked in your mcqs also so in many respects pozzolization is regarded as the negative impact of calcification so in calcification ultimately you will get the soil as acidic soil and uh, the calcification process tends to concentrate calcium in the lower part of the behydration where pozzolization leaches and the entire sodium of the calcium carbonate is being present okay so the horizon and all you no need to remember these are like the horizon layer is nothing but where the calcium gets accumulated okay just remember as such and also like apart from calcium the other bases are also removed and the whole soil becomes distinctly acidic so this is where the entire concept lies so all the bases are removed and finally only uh, soil becomes uh, that much acidic in fact the process is essentially one of the acid leaching so the next method is glazation so these are like very peculiar terms you just have to memorize everything so glay in turn russia it means blue green or green clay okay so you see the color it's like bit of grayish uh, greenish in color so this is the method involved here, that is glazation so it's a method of soil formation and that results in the formation of glay in the lower part of the soil profile and above the parent material due to poor drainage condition that is lack of oxygen where waterlogged condition prevail so imagine the water is usually clogged here and uh, there is no way for the air to escape above so finally it results in the formation of glaze okay that is glaze is the compound that are usually blue or green in color so these compounds will ultimately result in the color changes of the soil that is usually in blue or green or green clay such soils are otherwise called as hydrophorpic soils so just remember glycation is like green soil you can easily write it so this is mainly due to the anaerobic condition existing in the soil because due to the water clock in the above surface so the like the poor drainage condition results from uh, mainly due to the topographic position usually such as any depression land where water stands continuously or very close to the surface and also like impervious soil parent material that is impervious is the permeability of the soil parent material if the upper surface of the soil parent material is very hard okay it doesn't uh, allow the water to go out of it and also it doesn't allow the water to aerate through that okay so like impermeability also play a huge role in the poor drainage of the soil and also lack of aeration so suppose if the plant is grown in a condition where uh, the oxygen availability is very low especially in the marshy lands where anaerobic condition prevails vastly so in that places also the soil will uh, will uh, impact a greenish tinge and also like the solubility of the complexes such as uh, fe2 plus organo complexes so guys if you haven't uh, remember how the ferrous salt look likes you could uh, recall in uh, recall your uh, school practicals so in your school practicals you could have seen that uh, iron salts are usually like bluish to greenish color so when this bluish to greenish, greenish color is mixed with the soil it, it imparts that uh, color to the soil so this is how glaze is actually formed and finally this is responsible for the production of the typical bluish to grayish horizon that is the presence of iron organo comp organo organo complexes and with the mottling of yellow and reddish brown colors so you know that if iron is present some some might uh, undergo oxidation and also it will impart the formation of rust the giving colors such as reddish brown also so this is the reason why different colors is being formed 
and the next thing is salinization so many of you know that salinization is related to the salt so it is a process of accumulation of salts such as sulfates and chlorides of calcium and magnesium that is all the salts that is uh, if there is any accumulation of the salt the soil will be turned into saline so this is called as salinization so it is very quite common in arid and semi arid regions and also it may play it may also take place through capillary rise of saline ground water and by inundation with sea water so whenever where, wherever the, the sea water intrudes into that sea water is a huge potential storage of uh, salt nacl so if these so sea water just intrude into the uh, normal terrestrial lands that is especially in uh, marine and uh, coastal soils it, the soil will be converted into saline okay so this is how sea water is a big uh, causage factor for saline soils and also like salt accumulation may also result from irrigation or seepage in the areas or impeded drainage so if the so if the if the if the drainage is like imparted in the same places for over and over this will result in the formation of the soil within itself so that is improper irrigation so irrigation should always be like flowing from one point to another it should never be stagnant if it is stagnant then soil formation is definite there So desalination is the removal of or leaching of excess soluble salts from the horizon source soil profile. So basically, this is the reversal of salinization. So you can read more about here. And the next thing is solonization or alkalization. So as the term itself denotes, here the soil is going to accumulate huge number of bases. Bases is bases such as uh, all the cations that includes uh, calcium, magnesium, manganese. Everything is going to be accumulated here. Okay. So this thing, this is about solonization. and the solidization or dealkalization so basically it is a reversal of alkalization so that is the removal of uh, na plus from the exchange sites so this involves dispersion of clay so so if the sodium is present more then the soil will be like this so this is called as alkalization soil so you see you see a clump of huge huge soils accumulating together so these are like very much rich in uh, sodium so these are like alkaline soils so whereas if the sodiums are removed from that so you could see this is the same picture that is taken before and after the removal of uh, sodium so this is like alkalization and this is like dealkalization so you could see how the number how the thickness has been reduced very uh, drastically so this is how dealkalization actually takes place so the next thing is uh, pedoturbation so before going into these points just remember in a simple word so pedo turbation is like turbation is nothing but mixing of all the soils so just remember this is a soil surface you could have all the all the kinds of soil that is you, you can have black soil you can have red soil you can even have alluvium soil and you can also have mountain soil so this combination of all the soil the process is called as pedo turbation so like uh, the process of mixing of all the soils so just remember this word alone this could alone help you to write your answers so there are like various types of pedo turbation so there are like three types one is faunal pedo turbation floral pedo turbation and argillic pedo turbation so fauna is mainly related to animals that is when animals cause such as ants earthworms moles rodents and man himself cause mixing of the soil it is called as faunal pedo turbation so the next thing is floral pedo turbation so when it is caused by the plants that is flora by uh, formation of pits and mounds it is called as pedo turbation and final one is like argillic pedo turbation so it is the mixing of materials in the solum solum is nothing but it is the upper part of the soil that is the upper surface of the soil so by the churning process caused by sweltering clays so as observed in deep cotton soil so this point is like bit tricky so like sweltering clays is nothing but if the soil the clay soil is being wetted with huge amount of water it will produce lot of foams actually so churning is nothing but it is like a milking process so it produces a lot of white color foam color structures so this will result in the formation of uh, all the kinds of soil okay so just imagine this is a what to say this is a beaker and you have soil dipria this is like clay so when when it is immersed in water and when it is shaken very much uh, intensely you will see like froth go, growing up there okay so what happens is like in the many fields the froth will come off and they will settle into a separate uh, column so these will be like a uh, like bit bit uh, bit whitish to grayish color so these will form a separate layer and this these are uh, the constituent in the soil is also different when compared to the other clay soil 
okay so this is called as argillic pedoturbation so churning process is like milking process so when the clay is being uh, immersed in a water and the foam will the foam will come out of that and the foam will form a finally a uh, different layer this is called as argillic pedoturbation okay so this is bit tricky just remember this thing alone okay so can you see this is how pedoturbation soil actually look like so you have a separate soil here okay they are one color and one more color is there and again one more color is there and again like see four soils are being mixed together so this is called as pedoturbation so just remember the image it might uh, clarify your concept of understanding okay so guys that puts end to today's uh, chapter on soil sciences so if you want to make more and more videos on soil sciences just, just do, do let us know and uh, if you really like the video give it thumbs up and do share and comment and also if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do subscribe so I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you guys. Have an awesome day.